All right, this is going to be about why gravity <clears throat> as space-time is subjective. So I had this um, debate or discussion with a fellow YouTube troll yesterday um, and it was actually regarding um, Noam Chomsky relying on Isaac Newton as creating the the paradox of modern science and what um, has been summarized as the quote unquote new Mysterianism, Mysterianism, and that's just a fancy way of stating that humans have evolved to not be aware of what consciousness actually is as the source of reality. And what Noam Chomsky was emphasizing is that Isaac Newton, when he created gravity as a scientific model of reality, he established that we cannot know reality directly, but we can only know theories about reality. And so the basis of science is these mathematical theories. And what I was pointing out is that Newton has been proven to have been directly inspired by Architas and the music theory that was called Pythagorean, but it's it's not really orthodox Pythagorean. It, it, it's from Plato and Architas. And essentially, the concept is that if you square a weight as increased tension, then you will double the frequency. And this is what became the inverse square law. And then using a circle as a change of direction with no change in length, then the then Newton was able to develop the uh, the calculus um, so that um, time can be reduced or zero zeroed out to a a singularity in space as a spatial point. And so this concept of center of mass as a geometric singularity of space-time then um, has enabled modern science to
launch a phallic um, tool into um, outer space, the what Dr. Helen Caldicott calls "quote unquote" missile envy. So, in in Western science, this started with um, from Archytas and Plato. It was used for catapults originally. The issue was how to double the size of a catapult precisely and therefore irrational magnitude was required as a as the Greek miracle uh, the concept that um, ratios could be the the numbers themselves could just um, converge into uh, a zero point in space in um, space time, and then the and then it would just be a geometric continuum as a new type of number. Even though, in terms of time, the uh, arithmetic would continue, and this this is called the power axiom set as the the proof by contradiction and then the technology just created more precise um, standards for what the proof by contradiction required so that the concept of zero had a higher level of precision in technology and this this was the subject of math professor Joe Mazur's book on the um, Zeno's paradox and the mainstream science assumes that calculus solved Zeno's paradox which converts time into a spatial measurement but as Joe Mazur um, emphasized in his book on Zeno's paradox, the in fact the technology just creates the illusion that we can dismiss time as a as a zero measurement. But because the technology is an external measurement there is always a linear operator conversion between time and frequency. And so what Roger Pentrose is now emphasizing, and he just got the Nobel Prize last year for his work on black holes, is that um, mass originates from um, frequency as quantum non-commutative frequency with time and therefore um, uh, Newton was was ultimately wrong even though his model it it works for um, a materialistic technology that largely is just this uh, well, Newton was celibate, but he was psychologically projecting his um, life force energy into this um, ejaculate, ejaculation force of gravity for um, can, cannon, cannonballs and cannon trajectories. And then later, that same concept was just expanded to missiles. And so everybody says, well, the math, quote unquote, works. It works. So therefore, it, Newton, even though he admitted he didn't know what gravity was, that it was just a mathematical action at a distance. And therefore, um, God must harmonize the universe. Um, 
he of course aligned himself with the gold standard of money and then he led the um the the crackdown by execution of any uh, counterfeits of gold and so he was part of the um colonial expansion of the the British Empire and so um so th the issue is that space time in relativity requires a two two measurements and in fact quantum the quantum measurement does not require uh, two different spaces because it's inherently non-local. So the non-commutative phase means you can have two frequencies as mass, but they're non-local before space-time is created. And that's why space-time is inherently subjective. And modern science is accelerating time on earth through technology and then destroying space as a symmetric mathematical standardized commodity so life is being killed off and then time is being accelerated but we've learned that earth is just a speck of dust in the in the universe and that the universe is accelerating in its expansion and as Dr. Jack Sephardi, as a quantum physicist, emphasizes, the future is the holographic um, frequency energy of our of our of our origin of the Big Bang, so that we are we are being guided by what we see as the past in space, but it's the future in terms of energy. And then the opposite is true for matter, where we're, we're working with the, we're increasing the entropy of gravity on Earth as we claim to be decreasing the entropy of matter.